So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Anwar Anyas uh, from Rice Research Institute of Sweden. Um, today I'm going to um, talk about cerium oxide nanoparticle as efficient UV uh, additives for clear coating application. At the beginning, I will give a brief introduction about nanotechnology activities at RISE, where, which I'm leading. And then I will present to cerium oxide nanoparticle as an efficient UV absorber for clear coating application and the conclusion. RISE is the largest uh, polytechnical research institute in Sweden and um, roughly have 2,800 employees with 30% with PhD. And we have turned over roughly about 3 billion sick. Uh, most of our turnover actually coming from SMEs and industrial industry. And we also host more than 100 test bed and demo facilities. At RISE, we are active uh, in nanotechnology. Uh, in this slide, you can see that we are active on the nanomaterial synthesis processing and also their integration of devices. We are also active in pilot scale production of the nano additives. And we are also active in characterization of nanomaterials and the uh, safety and environmental aspects of the nanomaterials as well. Uh, there are a couple of uh, interesting uh, key areas for us, for example, functional coating and biomedical application of magnetic nanoparticle and pilot scale production of nanoparticle and integration of nanomaterials in the components and also nanotox study. But today I'm going to talk only on the functional coating, especially on the UV protective uh, application of the nano particles. Uh, except that we, at RISE, we also have a paint center. We have pilot uh, scale facilities uh, for wet chemical surface treatment. We also have a spray bows robot. And we also have a uh, spray bows for powder coating. Uh, we have a large oven uh, for pilot, pilot size uh, uh, drying, uh, also curing. Uh, we have also other instruments like atmospheric plasma jet uh, for activation of surfaces, deposition of coating. And we also have a vacuum plasma chamber, of course, many more. Uh, in, in paid center, we also have uh, state-of-art uh, characterization tools like for evaluation of adhesion, uh, thermography, particle size distribution, 3D scattering, uh, uh, scanning, microscopy, and various analysis tools for the coating. As you know, um, um, most of the materials, especially organic materials, they degraded under sunlight, especially the UV portion of sunlight is uh, damaging the, the substrate. And this damage is mainly due to the photolysis or absorption of UV light that, that, that can excite electrons to high energy level and then it's followed by auto oxidation, uh, which uh, forms peroxy and hydroperoxy radical and then uh, embrittlement of this uh, of the organic uh, polymer materials uh, by uh, cross-linking. For that reason, uh, the material must be protected uh, from UV light. And UV light, as you know, that they 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 are three different category. One is the, in the UVC. Actually, this this light doesn't reach the Earth's, uh, Earth's surfaces, but UVB or UVA is uh, quite important actually uh, in, in damaging the substrate. And for that reason, uh, UV protective clear coating is often used. Uh, 
uh, to protect the light sensitive materials from UV damage. And generally a combination of UV absorber and the house uh, give a best protection, UV protection. And commercially uh, available UV absorber is mostly based on organic uh, UV absorber. As you can see, they have those UV absorber has uh, uh, quite different uh, absorption range. They have uh, uh, cyanoacrylate, oxa oxanilate, benzophenone, benzotriazole, and triazines. And they are quite big market. It's uh, almost a uh, 1 billion market right now. And it's also going to increase. And hindered amine light stabilizer, that's also almost 1 billion market. Um, the hindered amine light stabilizer, which is called, often called HALS, does not absorb UV radiation, but um, inhibit the um, degradation polymer uh, by removing the free radicals that is produced during the photooxidation step. Therefore, uh, I mean, unfortunately, this uh, uh, organic UV absorber and the hulls, they also uh, degrade, degrade on the sunlight irradiation. For that reason, actually, we need a more efficient or more durable uh, UV absorber. Uh, at RISE, uh, we work uh, with uh, inorganic uh, UV absorber. Uh, to protect or to develop a more durable UV absorber for clear coating. And there's a two way of doing this. For example, one is you can directly add inorganic uh, UV absorbing nanoparticle for clear coating formulation as a UV absorber. Uh, other way is actually you can um, uh, develop a core shell a latex like this. Uh, which you can use as a binder in, in, the, in the clear coating formulation. In both cases, you can get the clear coating. Um, when it comes to the, the differences between organic and the inorganic UV absorber, as you can see from those slides that actually, uh, the, in the same manner, the inorganic UV absorber, for example, here I just listed two, cerium oxide and zinc oxide, they also has a similar absorption and range in the, in the UV range. Uh, only problem with inorganic nanoparticle, actually they, they form some kind of haze. It's not as clear as, as an organic UV absorber. So if we manage to disperse nanoparticle well in the clear coating, actually we will have a similar performance. Um, this is exactly what I mentioned earlier. And, and this is classic way where you mix with binder together with the inorganic nanoparticle, and you just mix physical mixing, and then you will ending up the clear coating and that contains inorganic uh, nanoparticles, which is represented by a yellow dot here. But this leads to the um, aggregation because uh, due to the nature of the nanoparticles, they tend to aggregate. So you often, this kind of uh, physical mixture often leads to some kind of haze and the matting effect. And this is exactly uh, what I presented earlier. So you have nanoparticle and you have a binder. And when you're mixing them together, basically you can get this uh, a composite, nanocomposite type of a coating, which can uh, prevent the, the substrate, underlying substrate from the UV damage. And first step uh, is actually when we try to incorporate nanoparticles into the coating, first step is to synthesize the nanoparticle in cost efficient way. And this is one of the process that we developed at the rise, basically. Um, this is solventless synthesis of serum oxide. You can synthesize them by simple uh, thermal decomposition at very high concentration. And this is an image of serum oxide nanoparticles, we, which we synthesized and also successfully in, incorporate into the alkyd-based uh, solvent bond coating. Uh, most important thing in cooperation of inorganic nanoparticles in clear coating, regardless if it's solvent born or aqueous born, actually we need to engineer the surface of the nanoparticle 
uh, to enhance the compatibility of nanoparticles with the binder system in the coating. And this is very important. And depending on the, the, the binder system, it can modify the surface of nanoparticles, either cationically, or anionically, or non-ionically. And this will increase the compatibility of the nanoparticle with binding coating system, as well as dispersion. And uh, it's quite important actually to uh, able to characterize the surface of the nanoparticle. Here you can see the image of the EELS image of the oleic acid uh, coated nanoparticles. Uh, when we when we incorporate sodium oxide nanoparticle, for example, into the coating, uh, first we synthesize sodium oxide nanoparticle. Here you can see that sodium oxide nanoparticle uh, synthesized by a colloidal process, precipitation process, and then this nanoparticle is is modified with the polyacrylic acid. Then we we create the negatively uh, charged surface on the sodium oxide nanoparticle. Then we can add it into the commercial available clear coating formulation. Here you can see in this yellow uh, curve actually is commercial clear coating with organic UV absorber. This green one actually newly develops it, the clear coating actual serial nanoparticles incorporated. And as you can see that due to the good dispersion of sodium oxide, you can see uh, clear coating, not haze. And this is the performance of the material. Uh, you can see there's three uh, plates here. Uh, in, on the top, you see the without UV absorber or no without house, actually this uh, wood uh, substrate is easily degradates. And the middle, actually, when you use your only organic UV absorber and the house, and it, it also partially degradates. But when we're using the combination of or normal UV absorber, serum oxide, and nanoparticles together with uh, the light stabilizer, actually, the substrate remain intact. And then another way of, of incorporating nanoparticle into the clear coating is actually you can make a core shell nanoparticle like this, which uh, this red uh, sphere is represented by polymer, where the middle part, yellow, is represents the aggregates of serum oxide nanoparticles. By dispersing the serum oxide nanoparticles into the monomer and do the emul emulsion polymerization, actually you can get this kind of serum oxide uh, nanoparticle core shell uh, hybrid binder and this binder is can be used directly in the clear coating and this is example first we disperse same as a nanoparticle in the um, acrylic acid uh, uh, monomer and then we do the we did the polymerization emulsion polymerization and we can get the same oxide nanoparticle in trapped uh, binder hybrid binder and this uh, binder actually quite easy uh, to apply, you can apply this binder in the same way as you do in the classic binder. And advantage of this kind of hybrid binder, actually, you don't have aggregation of the nanoparticle because each binder contains the uh, nanoparticles so that you can create very clear, nice uh, coating. And uh, this is the example of this how this hybrid binder is. Is, is performed actual uh, clear coating formulation. So we, you have example, for example, this red line is a, a, with, the, with the binder, and then this uh, black one dotted line is the commercial uh, clear coating with organic UV absorber. So you, you, can get, you can see both of them are quite clear and that absorbs UV light in this range and transparent. And this is also one example uh, actually test we have done uh, after six or seven years uh, exposure test in Sweden and UK, actually we, we can confirm that uh, this, uh, this sample uh, showed by, by arrow actually that contains the inorganic UV absorber, serum oxide actually did perform best uh, compared to the other sample, a reference sample with organic UV absorber and the house. So this indicates that actually serum oxide doesn't degrade it. That's why it can com 
protect the substrate longer time. We also have one interesting technology actually where we disperse the different type of nanoparticle. You can see here serum oxide, zirconium oxide, or many others nanoparticle. We can disperse them directly in the monomer, metal mesaccharide uh, monomer, for example, up to 40 or 30, 40 percent. And sometimes, depending on the nanoparticle type, some, some of them is quite transparent which means that we can use this kind of monomer dispersion of inorganic particles in the emulsion polymerization and they create a new, uh, new uh, binder, hybrid binder, and that can be used in the coating. So here I would like to invite you, if any of you are interested in collaborating with us in developing hybrid binder from different system, we are very happy to uh, collaborate with you. And below you can see just example of this different type of uh, nanoparticle incorporated in the, in the monomer and then polymerized. So we call it like um, this type of uh, uh, Wiener functionalized nanoparticle, which you can do the polymerization. Um, to conclude, uh, functional nano additives, for example, such as serum oxide, uh, can be incorporated in the both water and solvent molecular coating, and then we can develop more, more durable uh, UV protective clear coating. And also, uh, it is possible to incorporate the nanoparticle to the latex to create hybrid binder, uh, to create hybrid binder, which can be also used in the clear coating formulation. And in all this technology, surface in interface engineering is the key. And uh, RISE can offer this kind of competences, dispersion of this nanoparticle in different media. And uh, we are very happy to collaborate with you. And uh, our study actually shows that actually our long-term outdoor exposure, exposure test that is performed in both Sweden and UK indicate that actually serum oxide uh, nanoparticle in incorporated the uh, clear coating perform better than the current state of art uh, clear coating based on the organic UV absorber and the house. And finally, I would like to thank my colleague uh, who contributed this work, uh, some of the colleague from RICE and some of the colleague from the Polymath Spain and some of the colleagues from KTH. And finally, also, I'd like to thank to Woodlight Project, European Commission, for funding this uh, Woodlight Project that allows us to do this work. Thank you. Uh, hello again. Uh, thanks very much to Dr. Amber Anyas uh, about the uh, about the general presentation of the rise and their valuable studies on cerium oxide uh, nanoparticles for the improvement of UV resistance of coatings. Uh, if you have questions to Dr. Anyas, we have some time to answer to for him to answer your questions. Maybe I can I can pose a question, Dr. Anyas. Yeah. You described three methods of pro production of serum oxide additives. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you compare the film properties like scratch resistance and flexibility and some other mechanical properties as well, rendered by these each of these three different approaches, methods, uh, can you give us some uh, information about if you, if you study about the uh, levels that these properties change upon exposure with 
each different method? Are they behave, do they behave similarly or you, you observe some differences in their field properties? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Mustafa, for the, um, the question. I think it's a very interesting question. And um, I can comment. Uh, first of all, I would like to comment maybe the, actually on, on the performance of clear coating uh, based on the direct addition of nanoparticle to the coating system, uh, like physical mixture of just inorganic nanoparticles with coating. Um, uh, we, have, we have tested a couple of different systems, for example, based on the acrylic acrylic system, which is actually more flexible in generally. We also tested um, uh, polyurethane based coating uh, that the re best result is obtained uh, only, only from the acrylate. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So the best system uh, is, is obtained only with uh, acrylate based system, but not with um, a polyurethane based system, because in the polyurethane based, um, based system, we get more. Uh, more brittle coating due to the incorporation of inorganic nanoparticle to the system and we had a little bit issue with the uh, adhesion and also blistering. So um, I can say now that actually for inorganic nanoparticle based the coating uh, works best when we combine it with acrylic based coating uh, for wood protection. And the second the type of approach where we made a the hybrid uh, binder. Um, one of the challenge at that time uh, was actually to increase the amount of the nanoparticle loading uh, to the binder system. We had some limitation. Um, and also the, the, the emulsion po polymerization process also has to be slightly modified in order to get this uh, uh, hybrid nanoparticles. Um, so uh, there is a couple of challenge in, in both approach. So I would say that this uh, inorganic nanoparticle approach uh, work, I mean, generally results a little bit brittle uh, system, coping system. So it only works for more flexible binder system like Acrylate. Uh, not well worked with the polyurethane based uh, uh, system, for example. Thanks. Thanks very much, Dr. Anyas. Uh, we have quite some questions mm -hmm. by the attendees. Uh, one of our attendees asked, uh, whether there are researchers on the health and environmental effects of nanocoated particles? Um, yes, um, actually during this European project, we also studied environmental impact of this nanoparticle incorporated uh, coating and also compare it to the standard UV, organic UV absorber house based system. Uh, and then, um, uh, based on our study, actually uh, differences, I mean, impact, environmental impact of this uh, coating uh, towards environment, uh, it, 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 there is no so, such a big difference because we are adding this nanoparticle less than two weight percent level, which means it's very little. So there was no dramatic increase uh, on the on the cost of the coating and then there's also no no release of nanoparticle to the environment for example for for fish or i mean the, and we haven't identified like, the release of nanoparticle to environment so for, based on those information we concluded that actually um it is possible uh to use this uh system in in the commercial coating uh, only issue at that time for, for, for not 
being able to commercialize this product was that uh, there was uh, no uh, uh, good uh, producer for nanoparticle production in a way that we developed in this project. So it's, it's, it was not possible to use commercially available serial particles because of the problem, dispersion problem that we had. So we had to produce nanoparticle in specific way and make it available uh, for the coating industry to produce the paint. So that was a limitation. Okay, mm. thank you. And uh, one of our uh, audiences ask you whether you can use cerium oxide in high gloss, high bake clear coats, solvent bond clear coats. And the same uh, gentleman also asks whether you used hulls in combination with cerium oxide in your studies. Yes, uh, as, you, as you see one of the slides um, that actually we uh, we tested a uh, serum oxide with and without hulls. I mean, according to our experience, when serum oxide is combined with hulls, best result is obtained. But when we don't have hulls, only use serum oxide alone. Um, actually, it, it still performed better, but it's not as good as as when we combine with hulls. So. In our experience, uh, serum oxide works best when it's combined with the um, hulls. You can use these serum oxide nanoparticles in high bake, high gloss clear coats as well? Uh, um, yes, it depends on the what, uh, uh, what kind of binder system that gentleman is using currently. Um, we, we tested is for acrylic. Uh, uh, sorry, for alkyd-based uh, solvent form system, that means that, that is 100% solid, um, yeah, like uh, solventless or solvent-free alkyd coating. Uh, and it, it worked quite well, uh, but unfortunately that coating system, we only applied on glass, quartz glass, in order to evaluate the performance, but we haven't done long-term weathering test on wood, for example, for solvent pore system, because uh, in the project that we had, we only focused on the waterborne coating system. That's why we haven't uh, done much study on the solvent borne uh, coating system, but we can make the same oxide particle that can be incorporated nicely into the solvent borne system. So it's possible. Thank you. Uh, we have five more questions and unfortunately uh, we are uh, quite squeezed in by time. So uh, I will ask organizing committee to send these questions to Dr. Anwar Ahnias and if he can kindly answer these questions written, then they, we, they will again convey them to the attendees who pose the questions. Otherwise, we will, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid we will uh, not be able to catch the uh, schedule. Thanks very much, uh, Thank you. Dr. Anyas. It was a very interesting presentation. Thanks very much. Thank you. I'm, I will be very happy.